So the fungal culture is probably the, the, the best um, diagnostic tool for dermatophytosis. And um, the way that it works is that the um, ringworm uses the protein that is contained in the, in the medium. And then you do have a pH indicator, and that's going to produce uh, a change in the color of the medium. So it's going to turn red within 5 to 14 days. Typically, the saprophytes, which are not pathogenic um, fungal uh, fungi, will do the same, but it will do it much later in time. So they will start growing, um, you know, much later. So if you have a, a early uh, color change, it's usually a dermatophyte. So in order to get a, a, a sample for dermatophyte culture, you can use scalpel blades. You can use um, a toothbrush, which should be sterile, should be a one, one, one use only. And you're going to, and that's especially important in, in uh, asymptomatic carriers, so cats that you suspect may be the source of the infection, you're going to just basically brush the whole portion in every part of the body and then just use the, use the um, toothbrush <coughs> to just inoculate the, the culture medium. So you're going to uh, observe the, uh, the color change. And probably the easiest culture medium uh, media to use are the uh, dual plates. They do have a DTM on, the, on one side and an enhanced uh, sporulation medium um, on, on the right side. So uh, that usually enhances your chances of, of culturing dermatophytes. They're also flat and, and, and very broad, and that makes it much easier for you to sample because the color in the in the medium is not good enough. You still need to speciate and actually visualize the uh, the, the the typical uh, fungal elements to make a diagnosis of dermatoph dermatophytosis. So these media, media, for example, are very difficult to sample. I mean, you can see the color change, but it's very awkward to go in with a little piece of tape and try to get a a piece of that color. I'm just gonna. <coughs> Stop talking for a second, and I'm just gonna let this video go through. It just kind of takes you the different steps. Um, okay, so that's the dual chamber I was uh, I was explaining. It contains two different types of of media. So you keep the culture media at room temperature for up to two weeks, and ideally in a drawer, just in, in the dark. Okay. So you want to start looking at your culture media after a couple of days, every day, until you have some fungal growth. You can use any type of tape. I mean, this is uh, just one brand, but you can use any any scotch tape. <coughs> Again, you'd use uh, lactof uh, lactophenol cotton blue, which is the, the dye that's necessary to visualize the dermatophytes. Okay, so never rely on the color reaction alone. You, you need to you need to actually visualize fungal elements under the microscope. And you might be you might be growing different things. You might be growing malassezia. You might be growing bacteria. Um, typically, the colonies will be will be uh, will look uh, very different. Um, so this is just you need to use one of these charts and to try to um, you know identify the actual pathogen. These are by far the top three dermatophytes in, in dogs and cats. You have microsporum canis, microsporum gypsum, and trichophyton. 
Um, and what you want to do is look at the colony from the bottom and from the top. Again, that's easier with these flat um, dual plates. Um, the top colony will typically be with, with dermatophytes, um, a white, a white and just like cotton uh, type of colony. The saprophytes, which are not, not the pathogens, will, which, which tend to grow later on, are usually colored. So they're green, they're black, they're brown, and that's not, that's not ringworm. Okay. And then the way that you will recognize the, uh, or you identify microsperm versus trichophyton um, is the macroconidia. So those are these, uh, these elements down here. And it's really based on the number of cells and also the thickness of the, of the wall. So um, I'm sure you've all seen these tables, but this is just kind of a simplified one. Okay. And just this is uh, to uh, compare a couple, couple brands um, of, uh, of culture uh, systems. Okay. The, web that, the one that we use at the office is the, uh, the, the vet lab. They are wrapped individually. They have a longer shelf life. Okay, so the second situation is the same dog. Like I said, I could be reusing that, that photo, uh, you know, uh, with no, no limitation. Can be lots of different skin disease, but this dog is actually itchy now. As you can see, it's scratching. Um, so initially, we were considering demodicosis. Uh, we were considering dermatophytosis. Um, which initially has, are not predict like skin diseases. They just cause hair loss and, and inflammation, erythema. But these patients are not particularly itchy. This patient is itchy. So we're kind of considering, obviously, allergies as a possibility. But the point here is that you, know, you can't diagnose the, uh, an allergy with, with cytology. Or, uh, so the point here is to just kind of look for secondary problems, and more specifically, uh, yeast and bacterial overgrowth on the surface of the skin. So the bacteria, you can have cocci, like Streptococcus, Streptococcus staphylococcus, so you can have rods, uh, like Pseudomonas or E. coli. Okay, what kind of material are we going to use in this case? Yeah, that's good, perfect. Okay, and you're going to do a cytology. You know, you can do cytologies in different ways. You can use a cotton swab. When the skin is very dry, you can actually wet uh, your cotton swab as well. That will like, enhance your your uh, um, your uh, test. Uh, but you could also use a direct impression, which is just put the sign on the on the skin and just rub it rub it on it. So that's an example. can do it on the feet, you can use swabs on the feet too. Okay, then you want to air dry or um, heat fix. Heat fixing is usually appropriate when, when the sample is kind of greasy. And then you just use a diff quick. Uh, typically we don't use gram stains in, in clinics, uh, so diff quick is perfect. And then on the microscope, you're going to start looking at the low power just to identify an area that is rich in cells and debris. And then you can go straight down to oil immersion because typically that's how you will see bacteria in this. You need to be at oil immersion. And um, you look for cocci and rods and you look for intra and extracellular bacteria. Um, the cell morphology, so we have the cocci, the spirochetes, the rod, um, but typically you're gonna be in seeing in, in skin infections, cocci and rods. And then also how they are arranged, are they by pair, are they uh, in chains, etc. It's not really that important uh, because it can be misleading to assume, for example, that if you see chains, it's, it's uh, streptococcus. It's not necessarily true. Uh, it might be the case when you get a, a, um, a sample from a pure colony in a microbiology lab, but in in the clinical practice, I mean, the skin is not a petri dish, so you may not really see that kind of arrangement. Okay, and this is an example of extracellular cocci on the left and intracellular cocci on, on the right side. Won't really necessarily change much with, with your treatment, but it's just one way to describe uh, what, what you're seeing. 
just a comment about uh, reading cytology. The system, you know, that goes from one plus to four plus is extremely subjective. I mean, my three plus may not be your uh, three plus. Um, so it's probably better to just try to look at about 10, 10 um, fields that are busy, not, not empty fields, and then come up with an average. And so instead of uh, using a subjective system, use an objective one and uh, you know, tell your veterinarian, I sell one to two cocci or occasional cocci, um, or say you know, five to 10 or 10 to 25, or two numerals to count over 100. That's a lot more objective because most likely if you try you know, three people, um, you'll probably pretty much all agree to that. Whereas you might, one might say one plus, you know, it depends on how empty or, or full the glass is, right? So just try to use an objective uh, system. So yeast is another uh, infection uh, that can cause uh, an overgrowth on the surface of the skin. And we're going to be using a cytology for these guys as well. Um, and what uh, may be helpful in this case also would be to do a, a scotch tape or an acetate preparation. So you can just to be using the sticky side down of a, of a scotch tape and, um, and apply it on the skin. So that's an example. You don't need a cover slip. I mean, basically, your tape is going to act as a cover slip. Okay. The reason why this method is superior to the, just a direct impression smear for malassezia is that malassezia is lipid dependent, so it will uh, thrive in, in um, greasy uh, exudates, and you're more likely to pick that up on a on a piece of tape. So we'll really, kind of, you know, remove it from the from the skin. So it certainly is a little more sensitive, uh, whereas the swab or the direct impression is more sensitive for bacteria. But when you look for yeast, so ideally you do both methods uh, in these areas of, of uh, um, erythema and alopecia. Okay, and that's my anesthesia. It's kind of shaped. I mean, different people have different um, ideas here, but like a peanut or a Perrier bottle or, or a shoe. But basically, there are these budding yeast, and I'm sure you've all seen them. And certainly, a major contributor to to pruritus and, and skin disease, especially in dogs with allergies. Okay. So now we're just adding a level of complexity. This dog also has um, scaling um, or dandruff. Okay. So. What uh, should we be concerned about in this case? Yeah, and, and zero mite in particular, that um, Keletiella, yeah, walking dandruff, that's perfect. So when we call that walking dandruff, is, um, it's a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> I've never actually seen dandruff uh, that moves that much, but um, you know, the mite is microscopic, you can't see it with the naked eye. Um, but it certainly causes very severe seborrhea. Um, but you know, it could be a, another type of mite. Uh, you, we know we have an autoedris, a um, could be lice as well. There, is, uh, there are three species in, in dogs and cats. Okay, so what are we going to be using when we look for uh, these parasites? The tape. The tape is actually specifically for Caratella. That's great. Um, anything else? What's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you basically do in this case a more of a superficial skin scraping. So this one you can do big areas. You, you are not going to make the skin bleed. Um, you might remove a little bit of hair, but that's okay. Um, and you want to do again multiple areas, and you're going to want to look for. Look for mites, or sometimes all you can find is the eggs. So this is a superficial skin scraping. You can see in this case, we're not making the skin bleed. Okay, this was just to show that you can kind of try to taper the, the blade a little bit, you know, trying to create as little tra trauma as possible. 